Zambia is under attack. Over 120,000 hectares of maize fields like this one have been invaded and terrorized by armyworms. Government declared the attack as a national crisis. The military were called in to help in delivering pesticides and spraying the farm fields. On this week's edition of News in Depth, we're going to be looking at the threat that the armyworms are causing on the nation of food security. I'm your presenter, Masauso Mkwayaya. Stay tuned. Over the years, mining in Zambia has traditionally been prioritized in terms of investments than any other sector in the country. However, in recent times, calculated steps to diversify the economy from mining to agriculture have been taken in a conscious but serious manner. Government has on a number of occasions hinted that it wants to make agriculture the principal driver of the country's financial affairs. Notably, the agriculture sector in the country is profoundly inclined towards the cultivation of the maize crop than any other crop grown in Zambian soils. Perhaps this is because over 90% of Zambians depend on maize as a raw ingredient for their staple food, nshima, which is prepared using maize meal. Over 1 million hectares of maize has been planted in Zambian soil in the 2016-2017 farming season. Amid this looming drought in the region, the country seems to be the old one out, anticipating a maize bumper harvest in the 2016-2017 farming season. Maize seedlings exceeding 1 million hectares of land across the country were sprouting out of the ground at the end of December 2016. But this has been threatened by a squadron of armyworms which has attacked thousands of maize fields. In the last three weeks, 124,000 hectares of the total 1 million hectares of maize planted have been under siege by the vicious armyworms. We are all aware now that uh, we've had an attack in terms of armyworms. I think the scientists have specifically referred to this uh, uh, particular uh, armyworm as the falls armyworm. And the falls in this regard means the falls referring to weather. You know, like in Europe, you get autumn, summer, fall, and winter. So it's called the falls armyworm. Now, it's been almost uh, two weeks now since uh, we first had a report of this uh, army attack. And since then, government has spent close to 20 million kwacha uh, in response to this uh, armyworm attack. And uh, this 20 million kwacha has gone towards procurement of pesticides. Almost 61,000 liters of pesticides uh, have been used uh, to uh, destroy uh, this armyworm. Armyworms are known to be so deadly such that they are able to consume anything green and leafy in as little as three days in a field way bigger than a football pitch. At their largest, they may reach length of two inches, which makes it easy for them to be spotted and more difficult to eradicate. The worms carry the army tagline because of their ability to mount a lethal, well-coordinated and precise devouring escapade on green vegetation. The worms are pasture and crop feeders, which makes them a serious nuisance for farmers. Like most caterpillars, armyworms have insatiable appetites. In a space of five years, armyworms have invaded Zambian fields twice. However, experts say the worms that have attacked the country's field this year are not the same ones as those that attacked the country in 2013. The experts say the worms that attacked the country four years ago were normal African armyworms. The agriculture scientists add that the worms that have come this year are known as false armyworms and are a little more sophisticated compared to those tagged as the African armyworms. This armyworm which we have, it appears to be a slightly different species in, in that unlike the armyworm which we had four years ago where it could be seen crawling all over in the field, even in your lawn or in your garden and so on, 
this one tends to hide itself in the maize funnel. So during the day you would walk in the field and you look around for this animal. Unless you go and open the plant and you look inside, that's when you can see the caterpillar for this particular animal. But the beauty is that the chemicals that can be used for stem borer control and for the armyworm control are the same. The false armyworms usually carry out their filthy, destructive work at night and retreat to rest when the sun rises. The worms are most active in dumpy, cool and considerably chilly environments. They also enjoy carrying out their eating activities under crop residues, especially in fields where conservation agriculture is practiced. The worms do no damage as adults other than lay eggs for the next generation of feeders. As it grows, first it hides under the cover, either inside the walls or in the surface anywhere where there is a heap of crop residue or something where they hide under and as they start growing then they, that caterpillar is the one which is what we notice in the field. Until all this happening people don't even come to know that there are army worms. Because of the worms stealth activities it has been difficult for most farmers to quickly detect the presence of these caterpillars in their fields. Experts say African armyworms are darker in complexion, while the false worms are much lighter. When I patrolled, I found that most of my, my maize was destroyed. And those uh, armyworms, they start from the middle of the, I mean the, the, the stalk up to the, the, up to the root. So, about almost three, three quarters, especially this maize which is now higher. It is most affected the maize, rather than this one which is still germinating. Nizo bize kushanga kukansi ukulimiri siikuru, isi la kudiewa. So wapiswe ki mabina nani uza, mwaona mundu wano mene uliri, na tisina unee kukuya kungena kupiza uti milisi zili socha beza, diewa zonse. So nanyamu la milisi ina unaenda kumawantu makuru kuresechi. Banda wakamba kutia igurani mungkwala, maina ilachabia mzina wa mungkwala. Tabu atagroka potu kangonta, ishako spray. Tikaibu uono kuti za seven za buwanji palini. Ntawamanje wa chepa. That's why itabuela kuno kuti. Atitandi zile kuna wina mkuso that is silize kushitabu nubuino spray mumunda. Five out of the ten provisions in Zambia have been struck by the false armyworms and stock borers. Another pest in the family of caterpillars. The five provinces infested with armyworms are copper belt, dusaka, Central, Rapula, and Eastern provinces with Copper Belt and Central being the worst heat. However, sporadic cases of these insects have been recorded in other provinces. According to the uh, figures now, close to 95,000 hectares have been sprayed, which means uh, we, we are on the right course and uh, we have a, a few remaining. But Honorable Minister, it's also important to note that uh, there's much more awareness now so we have more people actually reporting their hectares who had not reported earlier on, but are immediately receiving um, chemicals. So we are still seeing an increase uh, in the number of hectares. And um, collectively, the statistics, we have not been removing the areas that have been spread. So if the 95 have been spread and the effect is taken, we should now, by this week, start re reducing those so that the hectares won't be going up. As things stand, about 124,000 hectares of maize representing 10% of the entire maize planted this season was attacked by the armyworms. The attacked crops were on the verge of being cut out of the 2016-2017 maize harvest forecast. This caught the attention of the highest office in the land. As a measure to try and counter the armyworms, President Ed Galongo ordered the Disaster Management and Medication Unit DMMU to coordinate emergency operations to fight the armyworms. Like Vice President Inonge Wina met the high level team and urged them to form a strong alliance if the scourge is to be effectively countered. The fact that this, uh, these worms continue to ravage the maize fields in some of the provinces of our country 
uh, means that uh, we need to put uh, more effort in eradicating the worms because they are posing a, a, a big threat to food security in the country. These are worms, but they have come with such a force of mass destruction that has to be uh, faced head on. Mrs. Winner indicated that one of the things affecting the smooth fight against the foes armyworms is lack of information flow between the farmers and agriculture experts. However, the team informed the vice president that they have put up a toll-free call center where farmers can call in and inquire on various issues relating to the armyworms. We have our toll-free toll free number 909, which has been operational. And we have a lot of other <laughs> numbers that we can advertise on TV and radio. Amongst the messages we've done, Your Honor, is to inform the people to be on the lookout for any suspicious looking worms in their maize fields, to report any suspicious looking worms in their fields to the nearest extension officer or the office of the district agriculture coordinator. We've also been letting the public know that, spray, uh, that they should spray fields affected by army worms with chemicals such as cytomethrin, manathon, lambda, and karate. They should replant any maturing varieties of maize where the crop has been wiped out by armyworms. In an effort to appreciate the effectiveness of the call center, the vice president decided to engage in a phone conversation with an affected farmer who called in from Chongwe. Good morning, ma'am. Um, Mr. Mbewe, are you able to buy these chemicals? Uh, I don't know how much, but I'm able to buy the chemicals, yes. Hello. Well, that's good news for us because we are encouraging people like you to purchase their own uh, chemicals. But the government will help you uh, with uh, the necessary advice on how and where to, to purchase the, the chemicals and also the, um, the use of the chemicals and how you use the chemicals on your crops. Minister of Agriculture, Permanent Secretary Julia Shawa informed the meeting that the Ford's armyworms are very destructive and ruthless because they are eating off the shoot of the maize crop, making it difficult for the crop to regrow. The permanent secretary proposed replanting of early mature and seed as one of the solutions to prevent total crop failure. We need to stock early maturing varieties. Uh, all we need is just to give them the quantity that is needed, and then we should be able to procure. So by tomorrow, Your Honor, uh, we anticipate that uh, we can actually get our hands on the quantities <coughs> that are ready to suck. Zam Seed, a private seed company, has reviewed that demand for early mature and seed has skyrocketed since the outbreak of the Ford's armyworms. Director for Research and Production, Dr. Bola Vema, said all the Zam Seed early mature and seed varieties that it produced for the 2016-2017 farming season has since sold out. We have sold almost all early mature these got disaster finished because of the same sentiment. People see the damage, they replant. Either I don't know if they plant the same field or new field. Plant new field is fine. No problem, you can plant additional. The Treasury has so far released about 20 million kwacha to aid operations against the fight of armyworms. The Ministry of Agriculture has so far used part of that money to procure more than 61,000 liters of different pesticides. Looking at the magnitude of the armyworms crisis, State House informed the nation that the president had ordered reinforcement from the military to join the fight against the brutal armyworms. The president has therefore called in the national service, the Zambia National Service, to join the operation. As you know, uh, the Zambia Air Force 
is, is, is helping with a disaster management uh, uh, unit to contain, to try and contain the armyworms. It's been recommended by experts that there is need for a very, very uh, uh, coordinated approach on the ground. So the ground operation will be supervised and, uh, and, and, and assisted by personnel from the Zambia National Service. So as of um, uh, this morning, the President has called in the Zambia National Service to join the operation, starting with Central Province and Copper Belt. This is in a bid to quickly try and bring to an end the invasion of uh, uh, armyworms into the farmland. The Zambia Air Force, ZAF, was called in to spearhead the airlifting of pesticide to different parts of the country. On the other hand, the Zambia National Service, ZNS, were called in to help spread thousands of affected fields across the country. The Commander-in-Chief of the Zambian Armed Forces, President Ed Galongo, who is known for his classy, well-pressed and elegant slim fit suits, said he was happy with the efforts that various officials have put in to try and contain the army worms. However, the Commander-in-Chief, who is also the Chief Strategist against the fight of the army worms, was compelled to step out of his command center located at State House for a little while. He had to hang his suit and put on gumboots to join men and women fighting the armies on the front line in Kitwe. The president's mission was to check on the trail of destruction that the armies had left in various fields on the Copper Belt province. It's going to be too expensive to salvage our own crop. Our own crop. We should put everything to salvage. <laughs> To date, over 90,000 hectares of the 124,000 hectares of land infested by armyworms has been spread. Authorities say the outbreak has been contained. However, experts have cautioned farmers to be very strategic on how they spray their med fields. An agriculture scientist says false armyworms are very stealthy in nature. As such, it is not effective to spray the fields during the day. He says it is difficult to see the worms during the day because they hide themselves inside the maze and at times bury themselves under crop residues found in farm fields, making it difficult for an ordinary farmer to spot them. They are there everywhere in nature. Normally, they hide and remain breeding dormant in the grasses in the in normal conditions each year. Since the outbreak of these insects, over 50,000 liters of different types of pesticide have been spread in different fields across the country. This puts thousands of hectares of land at risk of being polluted. The Zambia Agriculture Research Institute, ZARI, has appealed to farmers to be cautious when handling pesticides. We said we need to, at the later stage, to bring on board Zema because those are also issues that we need to consider in terms of pollution. But another thing which we have done from the outset is to tell our extension officers that once those containers of uh, chemicals are used, the disposal method should follow that the farmers that have bought those bottles return them to the extension officers. Why are we saying so is that we have got the natural tendons to use them for something else. And by themselves, they can not only poll pollute the environment the way we dispose of them, but also contaminate ourselves, because we may be thinking of using them for sugar, salt, and so on. Or and souvenirs. Or souvenirs, and so on. So we want to avoid that. So the aspect of disposal has already been talked of in terms of our communication with our extension staff. Despite the spirited fight put up by some government officials to fight the army wins, the president was saddened that the majority of members of parliament were taking a back row in the fight against these deadly insects. The president uh, notes with uh, considerable regret uh, the absence of uh, members of parliament in supervising and also creating uh, sensitization and awareness uh, uh, within communities regarding the outbreak and how to deal with it. The president therefore calls upon all members of parliament 
uh, to respond to the call of duty and take up this assignment because it's one of the most important calls of duty they can ever answer at a time uh, when uh, rural communities, their electorates are facing this challenge. He regrets their absence in, in this. After the concern from the president, some members of parliament heeded the president's call to join in the fight. Mansa member of parliament, Chitaru Chirufia, and his Kawamba counterpart, Nixon Chilangwa, moved in. The duo joined the spraying exercise in Mansa's Katangwe area to fight the Amions on the battlefield. This is a battle that must be won. This is a deleterious pest that is threatening our food security. So it's a summon to all of us to unite to overcome this uh, pest. So we appreciate the command from the province. You cannot fight this. This is couch from the office. You need to be at the front line. And we do believe um, Honorable Chilufi and I, and all members of parliament from Luapla province, we believe that we should be at the front line to fight this is couch. So for us it's very important, it's imperative that we come out in the field and be with the farmers. We should not just be shouting from the hilltops. While a scientific approach by means of spraying pesticide on the affected fields has been recommended, other players in the field like the Small Scale Farmers Association are proposing conservative measures to contain the worms. Immediately they see the caterpillars in the neighbor's field. If they just dig some trenches, along the neighbors with the field. The caterpillars will fall in the trench and they don't have the capacity to climb the, the trench. That's the simplest method that they can use for now uh, because armyworms tend to, 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 to develop into a particular area and once they come out, they start marching towards all the fields in the surrounding area. So the best they can do is just to dig some trench and then they will fall into the trench and they will not spread over. On the other hand, Others feel the practical and physical measures being put in place to fight the armyworms are not at all sufficient to guarantee an outright win. Minister of National Guidance and Religious Affairs, Reverend Godfrida Sumaedi, has proposed that the fight against armyworms be taken to the spiritual realm. She called on Christians across the country to pray against the armyworms. I would like to call upon uh, the church in the nation to pray concerning these army worms which have attacked us. This is an attack on our nation, especially when the, the president, uh, the Republican president, uh, has guided us that we want to focus on agriculture. So as a church, I want to challenge the church to pray, even as other interventions are being put in place. Inasmuch as these interventions are commendable, the million quarter question that many Zambians are asking is whether the country is food secure in view of the Amiens invasion on about 10% of the entire maize fields planted this year. At the moment, about 10% of uh, the hectareage has been affected. We did tell you that there's about 1.4 million hectares under cultivation. Uh, so far, our reports indicate that about 124,000 hectares are the ones that have been attacked. That is about just under 10% of uh, the hectareage in the country. And this is why we are quite confident that uh, in terms of food security, we are still quite food secure uh, because it's only about just under 10% that has been uh, attacked uh, compared to the rest of uh, the hectareage under cultivation. So we are still quite confident that with the, these good rains, we believe that we'll still be able to achieve uh, food security. Going forward, to equip the country with enough resources to counter any army worm attack, the Ministry of Agriculture has proposed the setting up of early warning systems that will enable the country to detect any looming army worm outbreaks. The Minister of Agriculture, Dora Celia, has also assured the nation that despite the unexpected and devastating army worm attack on the country's maize fields, the only thing needed to secure food stocks are continued good rains.
this is where we come to the end of this week's edition of News In Depth, where we were looking at the devastation that the armyworms have caused on over 120,000 hectares of maize fields across the country. We also looked at interventions that government have put in place to contain the spread of armyworms. I have been your host, Masauso Mkwayaya. Please unview in.